Hello folks, Evangelist Matt Bullen, Supernatural Secrets. We've done episode one on, um, on <laughs> Ready Heart and episode two on Royal Identity. And today, one of my favorites, I'm going to say that a lot, get used to it. One of my favorites, number three, episode three, part three, Raw Power. Ready Heart, Royal Identity, Raw Power. Woo! Ready? <laughs> Let's do this. David, 1 Samuel 16, 13. Samuel took the flask of oil he had brought and anointed David with oil. And the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David from that day on. Mm. One of the most exciting verses of Scripture in the Bible. And there's many like that. If you count it up, the last time I counted, I think I counted 39 times in the Old and New Testament together, the whole Bible, 39 times it uses the name Holy Spirit and the word power in the same sentence. He is our power. Raw power. Supernatural power. A supernatural secret. No other religion has a Holy Spirit. No other has the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I'm leaving. I'm going back to the Father. But it's going to be better for you because the Holy Spirit is coming. What? Better than God in skin walking around? talking, we can hear him with our ears, see him with our eyes. That's what Jesus said. It's better for you if I go away because then the Holy Spirit will come. Raw power. And the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David from that day on. It was a supernatural secret to his life, to his ministry. I love what C.H. Spurgeon, the great 19th century London pastor said, only let us be filled with the Spirit, and we know not what we can be. We shall laugh at impossibility and say, it shall be done. We shall attempt what we never dreamed of before and accomplish that which we always thought to be far beyond our grasp. Why? Full of the Holy Spirit. Raw power. Full of the Holy Spirit. I love what Samuel Chadwick said. Spirit-filled souls are ablaze for God. They love with a love that glows. They serve with a faith that kindles. They serve with a devotion that consumes. They hate sin with fierceness that burns. They rejoice with a joy that radiates. Love is perfected in the fire of God. Spirit-filled souls are like this. Oh, brothers and sisters, we need so badly to go back, to reseek, to resubmit, to refresh our souls with the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Yes, does every Christian have the Holy Spirit dwelling in him? The third person of the Trinity living inside of him? Yes. But as D.L. Moody said, there's a big difference between the Holy Spirit in us and the Holy Spirit on us. David was anointed and the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully on him from that day. There are Spirit-filled Christians and there are Christians who have the Holy Spirit dwelling in them, but they have not allowed him to fill them. Paul told us in Ephesians 5.18, be being filled with the Holy Spirit. It's a commandment. It's a commandment to be spirit-filled. Because it's not necessarily a given that just because a person is a Christian, they've believed in Jesus Christ and put their faith in Him, and the Spirit has come in and dwelt them, that they are filled with the Spirit. Oh, we need the fullness of the Holy Spirit. It is a supernatural secret. Raw power. 2 Samuel 5.10 and David became more and more powerful because the Lord God of heaven's armies was with him. Woo! 
I love what Oswald J. Smith, the great pastor of the People's Church in Toronto and a mentor of Billy Graham, Oswald J. Smith said, whether you do missionary work abroad or whether you hold evangelistic campaigns in your own country, you must know the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, there will be a lack of power in your ministry and you will accomplish little. If you want to see God use you, if you want souls to be convicted and saved under your ministry, you will tarry until you have been endued with power from on high. You will become an anointed man. Oh, I'll never forget the day. My first month in Springfield, Missouri at Bible College. I walked into the Bible College bookstore and I saw a book that caught my attention. The Passion for Souls by Oswald J. Smith. Ooh. You can buy used copies. It's not in print anymore. But your brother Matt Bullen's giving you a fair warning. Prepare to get wrecked if you read that book. The Passion for Souls by Oswald J. Smith. He knew the supernatural secret of raw power. D.L. Moody, the Holy Spirit in us is one thing, and the Holy Spirit on us is another. He had two little ladies in his church. His ministry was going crazy in Chicago. Young preacher, D.L. Moody. He had two little ladies in his church that kept coming to him and saying, Pastor Moody, we're praying for you. He said, thanks, but... Why are you praying for me? Pray for the lost. They said, no, you need more. You need power. He said, power? Every time I preach, 10 people are getting saved. They said, you need more. They kept coming to him. Pastor Moody, we're praying for you to receive power. Finally, he went to them. He said, okay, tell me about this. They prayed together. The night the Chicago fire broke out, he was in a prayer meeting with those two ladies. He was rolling around on the floor, pleading with God to fill him with the Holy Spirit. The Chicago fire broke out that night, burned his church to the ground, burned his house to the ground, half of Chicago. He went to New York City, began to try and go raise money to rebuild in Chicago rebuild the YMCA, rebuild uh, the, the church. One day he was walking down Wall Street and the Holy Spirit fell on him. He had been praying for power, praying for power, praying for power, begging God for whatever these two ladies were telling him about, this fullness of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit fell on him. He's walking down Wall Street, New York City. He went and found the room of a friend and borrowed his room. And he said, the waves of the Spirit that came over me were so powerful. He said, I had to ask God to stay his hand. I was afraid he was going to kill me. He said, I went back to Chicago. I kept preaching the same sermons I was preaching. But instead of ten people being saved, a hundred were being saved. D.L. Moody shook two continents for God. His ministry, Moody Bible Institute and I mean, it's still shaking the world, and he's been gone a hundred years. The Holy Spirit in us is one thing. The Holy Spirit on us is another. I love what B.H. Carroll, founder of Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary, said. Give me power. Power with God. Power with man. Power that will enable me to impress those with whom I come in contact so that passing away from them, my life will not be as a footprint on the sandy beach washed away by the next flood of the tide, but will be remembered after I am dead. Give me power. Thirty-nine times the word power and the name Holy Spirit are used in the same sentence in the Bible. Oh, I got so fired up at Bible College about the power of the Holy Spirit. I went to the Bible College library and I checked out every single book in the library about the Holy Spirit. It was stacks of books. I don't know why they let me check them all out at once, but they did. I read every single one. I wanted to know. 
I remember marching up and down in the middle of the night on Commerce Street in Springfield, Missouri, saying, Oh, God, give me power. Oh, God, let me know the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Oh, God, let people's lives be impacted by my life. Raw power is a supernatural secret. I got asked by the senior youth pastor of the church I was attending in Springfield to speak to the teenagers. He had heard a little bit about my story, and I was so excited. I went and told Lisa, my prayer partner, future wife, I went and told Lisa, I said, I'm going to speak before the teenagers. We have to fast. We have to pray for power. For four days and nights, we fasted. Once a day, we would meet with some of our other college classmates and pray, pray for power. I was so weak and so tired. At the end of four days of fasting, that's the longest to this date I've ever fasted in my life, water only. I went, I prepared a message that I felt God gave me. I went and I stood up before that teenage class and I preached my heart out. And I got all done and I went and sat down on the front row and I put my face in my hands and I said, Oh God, nothing happened. I tried so hard. I prayed so hard. I wanted power, but I felt nothing. Nothing happened. And suddenly I heard a big commotion happening. And I peeked up and the whole youth department was on their faces at the altar crying and praying. People were getting saved. Many of them got baptized that night in the Sunday evening service at that church and are still serving the Lord today. I looked up and I said, Oh, it, it's not a feeling. It's not a flash of light. The Holy Spirit does what He wants, with whom He wants, when He wants, where He wants. He is the power. Oh, many times in the last four decades of preaching, I've seen him move. I love what A.W. Tozer says about the Holy Spirit. He is a person, quote, unquote. Tozer says, put that down in capital letters. He is himself a person with all the qualities and powers of personality. If you only think of the Holy Spirit as being a wind or a breath that blows across the church, then you may be tempted to think of him as non-personal and non-individual, Tozer says. But the Holy Spirit has will and intelligence and feelings and knowledge and sympathy and ability to love and see and think and hear and speak and desire the same as any person has. And Tozer goes on to say, as a person, a relationship with the Holy Spirit can be cultivated. He can be wooed and cultivated the same as any person can be. People grow on us, and the Holy Spirit, being a person, can grow on us. A.W. Tozer. Ah. Oh. Are you intimate friends with the Holy Spirit? Are you hungry to be? can be supernatural secret raw power I used to put up when I was a preacher in my early 20s I used to put up three by five cards all over the house that said pray for power on the refrigerator door on my in my dresser drawer when I opened it on the mirror uh, everywhere pray for power I didn't want to forget that it's not me it's not by might nor by power but by my spirit saith the Lord of hosts Zachariah said I wanted to never forget it's him through me him in me him on me not me pray for power I remember the time I was preaching in Cibate, Colombia and I was pouring my heart out on the way over to the church I had ridden with the pastor and his two teenage children and they were very very cold to me the, the, the daughter was maybe not, maybe like 20. The son was maybe 18. They were very cold to me. And I, I was surprised. I couldn't understand it. And uh, we went to the church and I got up there and I preached my heart out. And I'll never forget it. It wasn't something I saw visibly with my eyes. I just saw the spirit begin to move across the church. And this is how I saw it. 
a wave of people reaching up to wipe tears from their eyes. It started way in the back. And it started coming, and it started moving, and I'm preaching, and I'm seeing it move. I'm seeing it, I'm seeing it come across, and people are breaking out, crying out out loud, and it's coming across. And many gave their lives to the Lord that night, and many got refreshed, got a fresh encounter with the Holy Spirit. And I prayed over many at the altar after the service, and the pastor came up to me and he said, my daughter and I want to pray over you. And he pulled me down and he pulled his daughter by the arm and said, pray over this man. This daughter that had been very cold to me in the car on the way over. And she laid her hand on my shoulder and she started to pray. And she started to weep. She started to say, oh God, please continue to give this man power like the power I saw tonight. And then she collapsed and I caught her and I pulled her up and held her and she wet the front of my shirt with her tears and she prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. She said, let this keep happening wherever this man goes. And I said, amen, Lord. The pastor, everybody was crying. That's not me. That's not, there's no, there's no silver tongue or anything that can cause that. It's the whole spirit he's the power raw power supernatural secret supernatural secret I stood on a stage out in the middle of nowhere Pakistan thousands of people sitting on rugs on the ground in an open field I preached my heart out told the message of Jesus as plain as I could in this 99% Muslim crowd and I got to the end and I said they they clapped and they cheered while I was preaching I saw I saw the same thing I saw the same thing I saw that that wave of reaching up and touching there and even the scarves of the ladies would move a little bit as the wave came across the, the crowd later my wife said did you see that did you see the the wave come across the crowd I said I did I did I saw it I got, to the, I got to the invitation. I said, if you want to give your whole life to Jesus Christ, will you raise your hand so I can pray for you? And 5,000 Muslims went, <gasps> audible gasp. We prayed. They prayed out loud in Urdu and asked Jesus to be their Lord. When they leaped forward, <gasps> The security guards with AK-47s that were around my oldest son, Luke, and my oldest daughter, Rebecca, and my wife, Lisa, came and rushed around and, and pulled us away because they, so, they, they were so terrified by the... <gasps> That's the Holy Spirit. Little old Matt Bolin from the mountains of New Mexico cannot do that. And you can't either, but you can see it. You can be part of it fullness of the Holy Spirit is real. Raw power, a supernatural secret. The Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day on. Hallelujah. Not just D.L. Moody, but R.A. Torrey, Charles G. Finney, John Wesley, George Whitfield, they all believed in that everything that God used them to do, the Great Awakening, the Second Great Awakening, was because of the fullness of the Holy Spirit. The great evangelist Billy Sunday preached every sermon he ever preached, and he preached across this country and won hundreds of thousands to Christ. Every sermon he ever preached, he preached with his Bible open to Isaiah 61.1. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the Raw power is a supernatural secret. Christmas Evans, the circuit riding preacher, kept praying for power, praying for power, praying for power, having no success, no results. Everywhere he went, it was dead, just dead, dead, dead. And one day he's riding along and he says, Oh God, I need the power this time. And the Holy Spirit hit him and knocked him off his horse. And he lay in the grass crying and praying and thanking God 
that he was full of the Holy Spirit. And that night he went and preached in a barn full of people from the village. And revival broke out. And everywhere he went after that, people would fall down on their knees, giving their hearts to Jesus. Cities would change. Towns would change. It's a supernatural secret. Raw power. A.W. Tozer said, How do you cultivate the Holy Spirit? Then he goes on, Be engrossed with Jesus Christ. <laughs> Honor Him. The Holy Spirit, Tozer says, will never, never flood the life of any man except the man in whom Jesus is glorified. Therefore, if you dedicate yourself to the glory of Jesus, the Holy Spirit will become the aggressor and will seek to know you and raise you and teach you and fill you and bless you. As we honor Jesus, the Spirit of God becomes glad within us. He relaxes and becomes intimate and communes and imparts himself. A.W. Tozer. Are we intimate friends with the Holy Spirit? Are we hungry to be? We can be. One thing I know that I've learned beyond the shadow of a doubt in my ministry the Holy Spirit goes where he's celebrated, not where he's simply tolerated or merely tolerated. He goes where he's celebrated. He goes where he's invited. He goes where he's wanted. Charles Spurgeon, that great London pastor, said, There is nothing like the power of the Spirit. Only let it come, and indeed everything can be accomplished. Brethren and sisters, it is intensely desirable, Spurgeon goes on, that we should seek more to be consciously filled with the Holy Spirit. We get easily contented with a little spiritual blessedness. Let us crave to be endued with the Holy Spirit. Charles Haddon Spurgeon. And what about Jesus, our model? Okay, this one for real. My favorite verse in the Bible. Far and away, favorite. Acts 10.38 And you know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Then Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Ooh, that's the Christ-likeness I crave most. Anointed with the Holy Spirit and with power, going around, doing good. It's a supernatural secret. David had it. Jesus had it. Many in our church history have had it. And I want it. And I want it for you. Are you hungry <laughs> for a fresh encounter with the Holy Spirit? I am. Recently, the Holy Spirit gave me this poem. I wrote it down, and I want, I want to close with this poem. O oh, Holy Spirit, bathe us in heavenly fire. Ignite our yearning hearts with a burning desire. Stoke within us an awful hunger for your presence and your power. Oh, how desperately we need you. We need you every hour. Our hearts and minds, please set ablaze with a passion for you all our days. Purify our souls in your fiery furnace of love, fanned by your wings, O oh blessed heavenly dove. Engulf us in your love, O oh sweet, sweet Holy One. Don't extinguish the inferno until your work is done. Anoint us with mighty power. Clothe us from on high. Flow through us to a thirsty world until the day we die. Let us feel your awesome power flowing through us, changing lives. Fill us with joyous wonder as each miracle arrives. Let us watch your winds of renewal dance across the crowd. Then hands raised and eyes moistened, hear the voices cry aloud. Let us join you, sweet, sweet spirit, as you transform the nations. Let us rejoice again and again in joyful celebrations. Whisk us up to heaven when our life down here is o'er and hold us in your arms 
secure forevermore. That moment. Father, give us more. Give us more of your Holy Spirit, more of his fullness. Let us be more controlled by him, more used by him, more flowed through by him, and touch more as he flows through us out to others. As you said, Lord Jesus, in Luke eleven thirteen, how much more will the Holy Spirit Will, the, will your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? We're asking in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Guess what? Number four is coming. Supernatural secret. Ravenous hunger. See you then.